I'm working with some pretty massive data and I'm trying to help myself with in a text mine by doing conditional formatting based on a column other than the one that the data is in. Specifically, I'm trying to do formatting on a text column, which is based on a numerical column. Now, you can do this kind of stuff in Excel on the numbers, but it, what you're looking at here is the result of, of uh, a gradient that was applied to this text, actually based on this, in this column. How does one produce this kind of result? Um, this really helps me, by the way. Let me just tell you what I'm doing here in text mining. But I'm trying to tell myself which asteroids, sorry, which terms per asteroid were basically monopolized by that asteroid. I looked up 21,000 asteroids. I ran them through a whole bunch of statistics here. And uh, yeah, see, this word resign of 21,000 asteroids only came up in eight of them. So this particular asteroid is one of the few that mined uh, pretty significantly on this word. People's was even more. And I want to know that because as I start um, interpreting these asteroids, I'm able to look at each one and basically see that as I glance at it, that even though I'm going to interpret based on all these words, vet is just a little bit greener. Parachutist is just a little bit greener. To help myself um, get this set up, I basically took the number of occurrences and just put one over that. And so this column is one over this column. And this goes basically from zero to one. And it is uh, what I'm going to use to do the formatting. Now, I'm using Nime Analytics Platform, as I always use in my videos. And this was actually a part of the workflow that generated the sample version of what you just saw. So for this one, because I'm, I'm dealing with memory as I record on Zoom, um, I only have chopped out a little piece of it so you can see what's going on. But this file format demo one was produced just based on this table. And pay no attention to the stuff up here. It's just me getting the table ready. Now, uh, this Excel writer produces the format demo one. We're going to do some uh, gradient um, additions. So let me, I'm going to basically take this plain thing and do that, that other column formatting. If you go into NIME and you install NIME extensions, you can install things like the continental nodes, and you'll need the continental nodes under uh, it's a it's under the set of extensions and they have their Excel formatting. This is what we'll be using. And if you don't have color manager or shape manager, this is also what we'll be using um, these kinds of things. So in order to do the formatting with a real gradient, first, let's start off with a uh, well, let me let me begin with the Excel nodes first so I can show you how this works. When you're trying to format an Excel and not have a plain Jane result, you basically have to convert your table to a control table, control table generator. Here's the control table using the continental nodes. Note that it changed the column headers to A through whatever letters, Excel names basically. Okay. So this table, by the way, is going to be a set of rules. And so you don't actually, you don't necessarily want this to stay in your control table. You want rules. So for example, if I want conditional formatting, if I want a gradient and I want to produce it here in the uh, continental nodes, I can remind you, for example, that this here, this is produced actually by the continental nodes and not by Excel. It's a little bit messed up because conditional formatting doesn't, I mean, wow. I mean, that's dang, but uh, it, it, it puts it in there. But uh, anyways, uh, you, the way you do this is not using 
actual data. You take your control table and we'll use a conditional formatter. And for my data here, the lowest value is actually the best. So 0, 0.05, 1, okay? Best P values are the lowest ones, best significance. And I want my middle to be white. This is just me working with data, but you, you can do this using whatever gradient you want. And uh, well, this is a weird node, right? The, the, the continental nodes are weird to work with if, if you don't know really what you're looking at. See this thing header? This is what I mean by rules. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to run this. What, what does it say? Header was not found in the control table. If you go back here, there's no word header. And if it found the word header, it would actually try to do the conditional formatting on that particular cell. So what we're going to do is we're going to label this thing with what are called tags. I actually want all of these four, I through L, to be subject to my conditional formatting. Because if you remember, I through L started off as all my numerical columns that had like p-values and things. So I'm going to use a string manipulation multi-column to do all of this at once. String, string manip multi-column before the control table. I like, you like to do a lot of this stuff before the control table because you're, you know, among other things, your terms are still there. Let's move everything over. I mean, like your headers, they're not changed. We move over and these are the four that I want to apply conditional formatting with a gradient on. And I'm going to show you how to do this one first before you do the advanced stuff because it, yeah, you kind of want to see how the continental nodes work. The tag I'll use is called, let's just call it gradient. It's the basic p-value gradient. And I don't want to add new columns. I want to replace the original ones, and that'll be that. Okay. And then when I run it, what does my table look like? Look, these all say gradient. This is a set of rules. And basically, the continental nodes are going to say, oh, oh, okay, I'm going to apply that conditional formatting over the, all of these using the data that I fill in from this stuff. And I'll, we'll get to that. But just note that it's the rules that matter. It's the rules that matter. It's not the actual data. So anyway, now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to look for the word gradient. Instead, that, that was the tag. So gradient. And now we format. OK, didn't, didn't yell at me. So that's cool. It looks like the community has uh, recommended some things. Oh, look, Excel formatter, apply is the one. This is the writer. So if I do this, then I can write my uh, formatted Excel. Remember that plain Jane Excel that we had? This was the file name. My formatter says, I'm going to read from the plain Jane file, and I'm going to write these rules to a new file. So let me copy this, control A, control C, and paste it, the plain Jane file. And then I'm going to write to format demo one, format it. And let me go ahead and open it after execute. And since I'm going to rewrite this thing over and over, I'm going to go ahead and not fail when I try to do it again. OK, let's go like that. And oh, well, that was no, that, that wasn't it. Hey, here we are. Right here. Look at that. We have. Uh, oh, that's weird. Uh, it's not, it, it didn't get my, my reds. I don't know why. Probably because I, I typed in something silly. So, but anyway, you, you note that it did the format. Cool. 
So let's go back to nine and uh, take my conditional formatter. This should have been 0.05 because that's as high as it goes. And I am going to go back to my, my uh, rewrite, try that again. Okay. And now the range was correct. 0.05 is as high as it goes. Let's see if we can do this on this guy and apply it here. So this is tricky. And one thing that I, I kind of want to show you is uh, look, at, look at this table, right? Let's go back to it because it, it, something, something was weird about it. It's, it's, not, it's not got these, like the headers aren't, I don't know. This is, I'd love to make these things bold or something. Um, so let me add, you say, man, just get to the problem. Well, again, you, you want to know how these things connect. I'll, I'll, I'll show you shortly, but let's use a uh, XLS font formatter. How do we plug this up? Well, we're going to use the same table. But we're going to load our rules here, yeah, like there, right? So we're using new, we're using existing rules, well, the most recent rules on the original table. This is how you stack formats in the continental notes. Uh, we don't have, hmm, we don't have a header called header, and maybe I need one. So if I go back to my control table, um, I, I'm not, I, I don't really know why it, it didn't. Isn't it weird that, that this thing didn't, doesn't even have the title, but the output does, right? And that's because we didn't put the header in our control table. If I double click on this, I can write the column header to the first row. Now let's try. Will it work? No. Oh no, errors. Okay, what, what happened? It says the generated table is not fully valid because it has wrong characters in there. What wrong characters? If I go to specs here and it'll show me what this first row is, look, oh, it's got that pipe. Now I know from just having run into this before that it doesn't, it's not gonna like this. And it's for that reason that earlier I made a column rename on that particular column. I changed this to this to get rid of the pipe character. So you may need to rename some of your headers um, when you're working with your data. So I did. This one doesn't have the pipe up there anymore. This is the one that I'm going to feed into my multi-column thing. And now we'll see if this works. Okay. We think it worked. Let's try outputting it again. No, what happened? Execute failed. Maybe I have it open. That does happen. Yep, there it is, still open. I didn't even close it. So let us uh, close this guy and try it again. Try it again once again. Waiting. Okay. And now we have headers. But to be honest, you can't see the difference because the data actually comes from the original table. The formatting comes from the control table. The only thing that the headers did, and you would notice this if you were working with uh, more obvious data, is it scooted the formatting down by one. Why did we go through that trouble? Here's why because we couldn't format a row that wasn't there, right? When we look at this control table now, it has this. And because it has this, I can actually format with a new tag. I have to put that tag on there though. So what I'm gonna do is use a row splitter. And this row splitter 
will have the first row top is first row. And then uh, bottom will be everything else. Okay, let's go into my row splitter. Include rows by number. I only want to include row number one. And so when I run this, the only one in the top is row number one. And when I run this, it's everything else. Okay, now let's use our friend the string manipulation multi column. Control C, Control V, and take everybody out, put everybody in. And I'm going to basically join the current column that we're working on's value with a comma and the word header. This is a tag, right? We're adding this tag to everybody. And okay, this is still replace selected columns. We don't want a new one. And you see what it says, split zero comma header, comma header, comma header. They're all headers. And now that I've done that, insert header tag. Now that I've done that, um, I can put these guys back together. So let's concatenate them and slap those guys right back where they started. Okay, there you go. Now we've got tags. Apply it to this table. Did you find it? Oh, it found it, nice. And let's output this. No, man, is it open? It's always open. So let's go over here, it's still open. And I'm going to close that. And uh, I'll form it. Hey, let's let's make this bold, by the way. And uh, let's uh, change the color to white. And so, yeah, let's change the font size too. We'll make the font size thirteen, just because we're feeling extravagant. And I'm going to use a background colorizer. And uh, okay, this table is going to use this guy's most recently changed rules. The color of the background will be black. And I think that's what I want to do. Yeah. All righty. Execute it. Oh, look at this. This is lovely. Ah, you see that? Yeah, we did it in nine. Cool. Now, um, kind of wondering why why it didn't seem to get all of my my formatting. Like, where's the where's the Am I missing something? Or what, why this? I don't know. Something happened in my formatting, but uh, we'll we'll have to diagnose that. You know, one thing that you should notice that's kind of tricky is that we did this formatting, but we're using it on two separate tables. You see that? This this is how control tables work. Yes, it's a set of rules, but it's like different sets of rules. Before we did the conditional formatting, we had these guys rules, I and J. But then we went over here and we did another set of rules and we used a different, we used a different table. Like these don't even have, they don't even have the, the same um, business going on here. So that's odd. Now, to be quite honest, I don't know why um, it didn't do the gradient on everything. So uh, that's a little weird. But maybe we can, maybe we can, like, I don't know, maybe we can do these separately. Like, 
take this table and just apply him to his normal set of rules. Because I don't like that I lost what I was doing. Oh, what happened? Oh, I didn't find the header. Okay, so that's not going to work. But you see how I can change rule set tables here. Okay. Oh, wow. What is that? Well, it's it's the rules. It's the rules that are being written. Okay. So so we've done some some interesting stuff, but but most importantly, we have seen that a control table. It, you can you can manipulate the rules as much as you want, but you just have to be careful because this thing is really finicky. And if you start doing joins and splits and stuff, then it, it, continental nodes are going to scream at you. They don't they don't like a lot of changes from the format that begins. Now, the reason I showed you all that is one, know that you this is how you chain things. The rules are piling up on each other, but the tables which are informing all this can be different. And in some cases, they have to be different. Now let's go back and put a color manager on this because it's going to be this data that feeds in. And my color manager, I want to base it on this IDF. And let's see, my minimum value should be white because it's a low, low IDF. And click on the minimum, make it white. Click on the maximum. Let's make it, uh, I don't know, green. That'll be, that's a good green. Okay. So we got our color manager. And now what? Um, actually, if you whoops, if you look at the table with the colors, it's it's putting these colors over here, which is unfortunate. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to create a column that has these colors. I'll do that by using the visualization property extractor. Visualization. And I remind you that if you don't have the continental nodes or you, for whatever reason, can't find these nodes, you'll have to go to file, install NIME extensions to look for them. Okay. Oh, look, there it is. We're going to pin this column called color there. And okay. Oh, look what it added. It added these colors. Cool. So now that we've added these colors, we can fill in uh, the term, I guess. Yeah, let's, let's, let's fill in the term. Now, uh, we're going to have to do a little bit of magic here. By the way, you may say, this is a whole lot of trouble. Yes, it is. But if you use NIME regularly, uh, once you've created this workflow once, and frankly, once you kind of learn the continental notes, you can just save it. And you don't have to worry about ever making this kind of thing again, because you'll just be able to, you know, load it and copy paste what you did. So yes, it's a pain, but you know, this, this is how I got it done. I've got this visualization property extractor, and it doesn't look to me like this is going to be in a format I can use. If you look at the background colorizer, which is actually what I'm going to use, you can choose direct color nodes in RGB format. And the help tells us that it can either be this FF, you know, stuff, this hexadecimal, or it can be this format. We're actually going to use this because this is easier to put together. But first, we have to make a change here. The, we're going to use a rule engine. Here's a fancy trick for you. The rule engine is going to take the color and that's it. It's going to assign it to the term. And you're, you're like, why would you do that? Okay, watch what happens though. Oh, expecting an operator. Sorry. Um, this is going to do it in all cases. True. When this thing is true, we want you to just assign the color, no matter what. We don't care. We don't care what the reason is. So when I do that, look at what happens. Hey, it put the color there. Uh, what, what are we looking at? Well, we don't know. So um, 
man, there's no way to make it into a string like that. So let's turn this into a string. We're going to use string manipulation. And we're just going to do one. And I'm going to take the string version of whatever Nime is trying to show. I, I don't, I mean, it's kind of weird that it's, you know, it's showing up as a color. I kind of like some text. Hey, look, look what it did. It made the text version of the colors that were sitting there. Now, if you recall that format that I told you I was trying to work with, uh, the ones with the slashes, it's using these numbers. And so if I could just like take this format and get it number style, like 255 slash 128 slash 64, then I'm in business. And I want this and this and this. So what we'll do is we'll go to a string replacer. And this string replacer is going to allow us to do some regex. Now I'm going to put in a regular expression and I'm going to click OK because I forgot what I'm working with. So let me copy this. Control C. This is the format. And I'm going to be replacing pieces of this. This is the format. Now, if this is the way that the text comes in, what we're looking for is any kind of character. And actually, we're looking for literally that. And so we, we want this special character, this open bracket. And so I put a backslash in front. And then we want the R, and then we want the equals. After that, we want a number which is, uh, oh, we want a, a group. So I put it in parentheses. And it could be any number, 0 through 9. And it can appear at least 1, but up to 3 times. OK? I'm going to copy this because I kind of like this format. That's going to be a group. Control C. And then it's going to have a comma, and then a space, and then a G, and then an equals. And then it's going to happen again. Any number, 0 through 9, 1 to 3 times. And then it's going to happen again. Any number, 0 through 9, 1 to 3 times. And then it's going to do this. Um, I didn't have any alpha channels, but it'll happen again. And then it has a special character that closed bracket. And because it's special in regex, I'm going to put a backslash in front of it. Now, I've captured four groups. And I don't really want to capture this last one. It's not that important. I'm never going to use it. So I'm just going to delete the parentheses around it. Dollar one is going to paste in that first set of things in parentheses for me. Dollar two is going to paste in the second. And dollar three is going to paste in the third. Let's see if this works. Uh, okay, kind of. It's cool that we parsed it. It's not in the right format. Let's come here. And we wanted the slash, didn't we? Dollar one slash dollar two slash dollar three. Isn't that isn't that what the colorizer said it liked? Oh, yeah. Okay, look at this. Right there. So now we've got uh we got some good business here. This obeys the rules of the colorizer. So when I come in, see right there? Right, there's that format. So now when I come in, I can use this to apply these colors from our color manager. See, these are like real gradient colors. You know, they're, they're actually these guys over here represented in uh, this term. You can already see how it's going to get pasted on top of the word. Now, there are problems. You will see these problems coming up. In theory, this table is the one we should 
build into our control table. You see how I had to go on a separate branch for that? Let's see if I can get away with just like feeding that in there. Maybe I can just kind of get away with it. I hope it doesn't generate errors. Oh, interesting. It didn't. I don't quite trust it because I typically get errors in these all the time. But apparently it's got, okay, it's got, you know, it's got something. It's uh, kind of working, kind of, I think. Sure. All right, well, let's see if I can. Uh, man, I was about to feed this into our uh, colorizer. Let's use another colorizer. It's a different one. Control C, Control V. And I'm going to have these rules feed into our latest table. Okay. And this time, we're going to use direct formatting. It won't let me select a specific column. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is not going to work. Let's, let's run it, though. Oh, yeah. See, the problem when I mouse over is that it says uh, it couldn't interpret the color split zero header. It's like, are you serious, bro? We, we, you're, trying to, you're trying to interpret everything? Like everything, everything? It is. And that's pretty lame because it, it's going to look at everything, no matter what it is, and try to make color out of it. <laughs> so, trust me, I spent two hours figuring this out earlier in the day. So, what we want to do is basically erase everything except for these guys. And we're going to do this the brute force way by using another multi column string manipulator, control C. And I'm going to come in here and basically take everybody except for column C, which is the one with the term. And I'm going to turn them into a null. To null is a command, an empty string. Just, just make them missing. And uh, insert missing values as null. That helps a lot because it, you know, it's just, just part of what the subsequent nodes like. Okay. I'm telling you this is going to have problems. This one right here. So let's, uh, from that, what are we going to say? Clear out table except for colors. Uh, except for term call with colors. Okay. We do need to do something about that very first, um, that very first row. So let's do a, I don't know, rule engine, just be kind of easy about it. And the rule engine says, if column C is like, um, sorry, if, if column C is not like, not C like term star, just anything, then go ahead and make it into what it already is. Replace the column C. Otherwise, do nothing. If, you, if you're doing nothing, guess what we get? Missing. There it is, it's missing. Okay, that was a quick way to do it. Um, keep values that aren't the first row. All right. Let's feed that into the colorizer. Boom. It didn't get confused. Let me remind you again. The continental nodes use rules, and you can change the rules, but you stack the formatting. See how these formats are stacking on each other? In fact, it might be easier to, to show if I put them all sideways, but I'm not going to put them all sideways because we have limited screen real estate. But the rules are stacking. Sorry, the outputs are stacking. 
but the rules are different. Three different sets of rules. No, maybe four actually. I keep changing rules. This, this original table got these guys as the rules. Gradient, gradient, gradient. What, my, my logistic p-value didn't have gradient in it? Nobody knows why. I don't know why. Uh, maybe I didn't, didn't uh, put k in there. Oh. oh, I changed the value. And that's what happened. OK. OK, that makes sense. That's why I didn't do it. Click OK. Cool. And the last set of rules is the one I want. So yeah, we, we, we had three different, maybe even four different sets of rules. Table one got these, and that was the point of that. Table two got these with the, the header tags. And uh, that was table two and three. But table four got only this. And it's using these to not get confused on the node. Tricky, huh? But when you actually execute it, let's see if this is legal. Did it, did it work? Let's see. Oh, it opened it and drum roll. Look at what we got here. We did it. Now, you say, there's no way I'm going through all that trouble just to get colored words. I mean, I. I mean, I would <laughs> if you had, and, and actually, what made it take a long time is because we're recording a whole video walking through it. But actually, um, it what it boiled down to was using a color manager on this guy, kicking out the colors you got, changing them to strings, and changing those strings to directly readable colors. You will not find these under the conditional formatting rules, right? They don't exist. And that's because these are straight background, right? And that should make sense to you, right? Because there's, there's really not gonna be a way, even if you use macros in Excel, to have the color depend on this text here. It's, it's numerical. So that means if you wanted to do special things like spark lines and all that, you couldn't, you just, you just couldn't pull it off. But, but we got it, we got our, uh, our gradient. By the way, if you wanted to do a three color version, then what you probably need to do is, let's go back. This color manager is only using two colors. When we go into configure, that, that's what you have. Uh, I thought sure there was a three color version of it, but I guess I, guess I was mistaken, but um, what you would do is you would apply it to a uh, slice from, say, 0.05 on up. And you would split out your columns and have another one do 0.05 on down. Now, that is, uh, uh, I mean, it's a little bit of uh, finagling. Uh, let me do it. Let me let me go ahead and do that. If you've if you're still sticking around, then let, let's try to do a three color version of it. So this thing goes from 0.05 to uh, actually the IDF column that we're going to use goes from zero to one, and I think 0.5 would be a good a good way to kind of cut things out. Let's start by getting a row index because we're going to want to put these guys back together. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to use a math formula. Let me remind you what we're doing. We're trying to use, we're, we're trying to go from our two color thing, which we have successfully produced to a three color version. So oh, save format. I don't want to save the format. I don't know what I did there, but okay. So let's do a math formula. And I will just produce a row index. That's all. So it's nothing but an index. Index. We're going to need this because we're going to break our table in two. Okay, we've got our index. There it is. Cool. And 
we are going to do a row splitter. Okay. Row splitter. And the row splitter will be on the IDF column. And if it's 0.5 on up, we're going to exclude them just because I'm going to have the low ones on the top and the high on the bottom. Okay, run it on the top. Here's our IDFs. Uh, oh, yeah, 0.33. Oh, wait a minute. None of them really, none of them get past 0.33. Ah, dang it. Okay. Um, let's, uh, let's not split on 0.5. I'll just split on point, point, I don't know, point 0.1. That'll, that'll work. Okay. There we go. Now we don't have the whole thing. So these are, these are uh, one group. And these are another group. All right. Point one wasn't so great, but um, about point oh five. I just wanted a better sampling there. Okay, that's a little bit better. Now, this one is going to use the color manager that we came up with. The high guys, these guys, they're going to use the white to green rule. Okay, I'm waiting for that to connect. There we go. And now I'm going to copy it and apply a different rule. This one is going to end in white. And the minimum, uh, let's have it be, I don't know, gray. This like gray. Right? We'll run them both. And then since we row split, we can concatenate. We'll put these guys back together. There. Slapped back together. And now we have our uh, Oh, it didn't do it. That's weird. Apparently, the color managers aren't mixing. 36. Let's see what we have here. I don't know. Oh, you learned something new. It looks like the two color managers are not going to mix. Um, we're not dead, though. And the reason we're not dead is because you still have the visualization property extractor. So I'm going to, instead of concatenating so early, I'm gonna go ahead and just do these guys separate, separately, control C, control V. And I'm gonna have him run through his own. And if these guys concatenate, see if that works. Maybe it'll work. Aha, 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 aha. Two different colors. Nice. Um, I'm, I don't know how I feel <laughs> about the, uh, this, uh, look at what it did. You see this? It says the max is still 0.33. It's not 0.33 in this group, man. Look at it. If you, if you go in here into the filtered column, it's, I, I clearly have cut out my 0.333. And if I go to my specs, why is it still saying that? Because 
because, because it's confused. Here's what we'll do. Domain calculator. The domain calculator is a node that like re it, it figures out again what's actually happening in your table. So when I have this output data and I look at specs now, look, it's it's not going up to 0.333 anymore. It's going up to 0.048, which is suspiciously near 0.05. We're gonna have to do this domain calculator in order to reset where these limits are. Because otherwise our color extractor is gonna it's gonna set the gradient based on mins and maxes that aren't true anymore. Ah, see, this one starts at 0.053 and then goes to 0.333. Now, let's look at our results. Ah, smoothness. See why that was bothering me, right? It, it, wasn't, it wasn't correct. So now that we have this, this guy is the one that needs to talk to our Man, I don't have a, enough screen real estate over here. He's the one who needs to talk to our string manipulator. Not, not, not the old one. There we go. Put that right there. Get all these guys and ship them over. Go. All right. There. Now we'll see what happens. Nobody knows, look at this. Could not read the color code color. Oh, look at what it did. It, see, when I concatenate it, it's got term. Ah, oh, it's got that dang. Oh, it's got both the color column and an index column, neither of which were things that were in the original table that we wanted. Like so we don't, we we don't want, we don't want that, right? So we have to take those those stray columns out. Um, let's use a column filter, and we are going to remove the color column and the index column. And why did we even have the index column? Because we needed to sort before that happens. So let's do a sorter. That was the whole point of an index column. It was to get everybody back in order. Sort ascending. Okay, now everybody's back in order. And then we take out those columns and let's see if this works. Hey, it does, it does. Okay, so, so what we've done is we've, we've created half of our gradient going up, half of our gradient um, for the low end of the data and another one for the higher end of the data. I wonder if this is gonna look the way we want it to. It does, it seems like we win. This is a genuine three, color gradient based on another column. The actual file doesn't have 36 rows, the one that I'm working with, it has 300,000 rows. And I actually do want to look at these at a glance. So now I know if I'm interpreting the asteroid Ahern that borrow, revile, drawing, and majestic are better words for me to base the interpretation on. For us, People's Beaux-Arts resigned and disappearance are rarer words. Now, they're sorted by p-value, so actually top-down is better. But in terms of rarity, the brighter ones are rarer, the rarer ones are not, and I'm not going to screw with these decimals on the side in order to know that fact. There you go. Three-color formatting in NIME, but uh, a whole bunch of other stuff as well.